You're listening to the BBM Global Network with 25 years in broadcast audio and video production. Our passionate team creates content and marketing for the world of Internet talk radio. If you've got a passion, come join us at BBMGlobalNetwork.com. The BBM Global Network. Your voice is now heard. This is Parent Your Parents with your host, H. Francis Reeves. Join Francis and learn how to manage elder care issues on the non-medical side for your loved ones. Hear the important issues facing our seniors today, including legal, insurance needs, and seniorizing your home. So now, please welcome the host of Parent Your Parents, H. Francis Reeves. Hey, everyone. How are you, you Internet Radio Land folks? This is Frances Reeves, your host of Parent Your Parents, coming to you live from BBM Global and Tune In Radio. Today is October 4th, 2018, and this show is a 2 p.m. Eastern show. So it's 2 p.m. if you're on the East Coast, and if you're where I am in Portland, Oregon, it's 11 a.m. But wherever you are, I hope you're having a great day. So today's subject is not the simplest or easiest to hear. It is my pet peeve, senior exploitation. It's real, and it happens way too often. And it doesn't even matter, male, female, rich, poor, if you're a senior, you have to be careful. I'm not sure how many of you heard of my second how many of you heard my second radio show on Buzz Aldrin, the second man to walk on the moon. The short version is that two of his three children, Andy and Jan, asked a court to appoint them as his guardians. And they said he was losing his cognitive function, he was getting dementia, and Colonel Aldrin had to sue his own children and in the lawsuit claimed that they had transferred monies from his foundation for their personal use and used his credit cards without his permission, as well as sabotaging his love life. All those things are called exploitation. Now, the kids argue that he has dementia and is vulnerable to manipulation. Well, who isn't vulnerable to manipulation? But the real question becomes, if he does, in fact, have any form of cognitive loss, who is doing the manipulation? Is it his friends? Is it his family? Is it both? What I do know is that no matter whether he has dementia or not, they are taking advantage of him. And why? There's $12 million there and everyone wants a piece. Listen, we're all used to hearing stories of wealthy seniors and their children exploiting them, a little like Buzz Aldrin, but perhaps... One of the saddest was the son of Brooke Astor. She was a huge philanthropist in New York, known for comparing money to manure. Money, like manure, is best used when spread around, was her famous quote. She died at the age of 105 in 2007, but her last years were spent with Alzheimer's. Her grandson, Philip, accused his father, Tony, of neglect 
and stealing money from his grandmother. Now, this is a family who has hundreds of millions of dollars. Philip was awarded the guardianship of his grandmother. And when he went to see her, she was living basically in squalor. And what is really sad about this story is that Mrs. Astor's son, Tony, had a co-conspirator, and that man was her estate planning attorney, Francis Morrissey. Together, these two stole money from Mrs. Astor, and this attorney actually forged her signature on a will amendment, which, of course, both of benefited both men. The verdict um, drew, the verdict was Philip had to spend a year in jail. He was 85 when this, when he received a sentence. He on, and he only had to spend a year in jail because there were 13 counts, all of which he received a year for but they were served um, at the same time. So the judge gave him a break. But the truth is, New York's first families of high society, people like Henry Kissinger, Barbara Walters, Annette de la Renta, they all testified that Mr. Marshall mistreated his mother in her later years and conspired to inflate his inheritance from her estate. So imagine these people were watching this man treat his mother in such a horrific way. And again, these are people who have hundreds of millions of dollars. It's a family that has hundreds of millions of dollars. Thank goodness for Philip, the grandson. He had a heart and morals. And then my other favorite, and this is also amazingly sad, are the caregivers and how they treat seniors. I'm not talking about caregivers just in assisted living centers or nursing home. I'm talking about some of the people we hire to come into our home through long-term care companies. When you have a loved one who has Alzheimer's or has dementia, they they don't know when to eat. For the most part, they're bed-bound or chair-bound. Caretakers put them in front of a television. They use the money that is supposed to be spent to feed and clothe the patient for money, cable. I mean, this happens. It happens all the time, and it's called senior exploitation. And I'm, I'm going to go into some more horrific stories, but the reason I bring these, these up first is because, honestly, when we have loved ones, even if they're in the care of others and we think that they're nice people, and most of them are, 90% of our caregivers are the good people. We only hear about that 10%. But nevertheless, you, it's incumbent upon you, even if they live in a different city, to visit from time to time. And you don't make a phone call to the caregiver and say, hi, I'm coming in on Monday at about 2 p.m. And we're going to talk. And I just want to see mom, dad, Uncle Doug, or whoever it is you're going to go visit. You have to just make surprise visits. And if you have people who live in the same town as your loved one when you don't, you have to ask them to make surprise visits. I know it's a little uncomfortable sometimes to walk to walk into a home where 
the person you knew and love no longer knows you, but it's it's a must, and it's your moral duty. And we'll talk a little bit more about that when we come back after the break. Talk to you then. The earliest human societies worshipped a female goddess. Little is known about this time because we did not always have a written recorded history. It was around 3100 BC when the Sumerians invented the first written language and everything that preceded this time is prehistory. The prehistorical record includes all of women's unwritten history from 30,000 B.C. to the time that men began achieving political power around 3,000 B.C. Male feminist artist Kimberly Berg maintains a strong position in educating and inspiring both men and women through his devotional art to the goddess in all women. Studying their history is paramount to understanding who women were and who they would become later living in a patriarchal society. To learn more about this important time in our history, go to www.isisrising.net. Do you ever wonder why certain things are happening in your life? How to start a business or a new direction? Need answers? Astrologer Bonnie Perbula can help you reveal your true self and gain strength and focus so you can achieve greater joy and success. Working with a natal birth date, time, and location, Bonnie brings out qualities to aid you in getting the best from your life. She can help you unlock dormant traits to bring you greater awareness. Bonnie also conducts public speaking engagements to educate aspiring astrologers on their journey to the stars. A gifted artist, Bonnie bridges her talents and recently launched a line of Astro Bears, uniquely created in colors of individuals' astrology charts. She also makes one-of-a-kind necklaces of crystal beads and woven thread. To learn more about the world of Bonnie Prabula, go to BonnieGPrabula.com. And for astrology consulting, visit AstrologyConsultants.com or call or email her at 808-526-1536 or BonnieGP at AOL.com. Hey everyone, how are you? It's Frances Reeves, your host of Parent Your Parents. And we're coming to you live from BBM Global and Tune In Radio. So before the break, we were talking a little bit about how important it is uh, to prevent your loved one from being mishandled by their caretakers. And I also reminded us all that it's not most caretakers are really good. These home health companies do their best to vet, just like doctors and nurses and um, nurses, uh, pardon me, the physical therapists, they're all vetted, you know, everybody has to have a background check before they're hired by the hospital, the doctor, or the home health care agency. But a, a background check checks your credit check, you know, does a credit check, makes sure that you haven't been arrested for felonies, not necessarily misdemeanors. And um, and that's all it does. You don't really know the person. And the issue with money is that when it's readily available, it's a little easier to just to to just take a dollar here or a dollar there. And sometimes that's all that happens, and I'm not so sure we care. But sometimes it gets worse. Um. There are these horror stories of nurses and aides murdering seniors by giving them injections or just basic neglect. We all remember in Florida, we had 15 seniors die after Hurricane Irma knocked out the power in their nursing home. And although the home was only 50 yards from a hospital, that's half a football field, 50 yards from a hospital, the staff simply let those poor seniors, most of whom had dementia, die from overheating, which is a painful death. 
And although the nursing home and its directors have been charged with murder, I can't help but wonder where the family of these seniors were during the five days when all this happened. And then there are the senior serial killers. One that comes up first is a woman named Kristen Heather Gilbert. She was a nurse and a serial killer who was convicted of four murders and two attempted murders of patients admitted to a Veterans Veterans Affairs Medical Center. What she would do is induce cardiac arrest in patients by injecting their IV fluids with massive doses of epinephrine, which is an untraceable heart stimulant. In fact, it's what's injected in overdoses, um, uh, in drug overdoses. And, And here is the really horrible thing that she would do. She would put this in their IV therapy. Then she would respond to the coded emergency. Often she was the first one on the scene and would resuscitate the parent, the, the patients herself. So in other words, she would cause the harm and run to the room because of course she knew where it was the minute the code blue came through so she looked like a hero but in fact she was a murderer in Michigan City, Indiana a Indiana hospital worker not even a nurse just a worker in the hospital became known as the angel of death for intentionally killing as many as 150 elderly patients. Orville Majors was convicted in 1999 in the death of six patients at Vermilion County Hospital who had been administered, again, heart-stopping drugs. But there had been suspicion around him in twenty in dozens of other deaths during a twenty two month period between nineteen ninety three and nineteen ninety five so he died in prison prior to having these other cases tried and then <clears throat> um probably the most famous American serial killer was a man named Charles Cullen. He confessed to killing up to 40 patients during his 16-year career as a nurse in New Jersey. But as it turns out, in later interviews with the police, psychiatrists, and journalists, it became apparent that he had killed many more And although he couldn't remember them by name, he could often remember the details of their murders. So experts estimate that Cullen may have been responsible for up to 400 deaths, which would make him the most prolific, I hate that word, but that's what they're using, prolific serial killer in recorded history. Now, Cullen said that he administered overdoses to these patients in order to spare them from going into cardiac or respiratory arrest. He told detectives that he could not bear to witness or hear about these attempts at saving a victim's life. However, well, and he also said he gave them overdoses so he could end their suffering uh, and prevent hospital personnel from dehumanizing them. But the truth was not all his victims were terminal. Some, like a woman named Gail, for whose murder he was placed in jail, had been expected to recover, but he didn't 
agree with the doctor, so he killed them. One of the witnesses, too, at Mr. Collins' trial described a lot of the victims as people on the mend. And then there's this Italian nurse who uh, killed these people because she was irritated by them and her family. I mean, she's just a sociopath. And those are some of the people that take care of our seniors. Again, a small minority, but they're there. So we're going to go on to regular medicine when we come back from the break. Talk to you then. Essential Nutrients LLC is the brainchild of entrepreneur Barbara Burns. Inspired by a desire to help others, Barbara worked with a team of scientists to develop unique nutritional liquid supplements with the goal to improve the quality of your life. Glucosamine, zinc, and calcium are essential to well-being, and this is the focus of Essential Nutrients LLC. Whether you're a professional athlete, weekend warrior, student, business owner, or homemaker, Essential Nutrients offers products for everyone, including the family pet. And they're easy to take, no pills. Health requires commitment, exercise, a good diet, proper supplementation, and action. So take action today and get your supply of Essential Liquid Nutrients by visiting www.essential-liquids.com. Don't put off your health any longer. Take Essential products today and start to measure the difference. Unleash the obstacles that bind you with certified professional coach Joanne Charette, a master practitioner in energy leadership. Joanne can help you break through personal and professional barriers and guide you to a higher level of empowerment and fulfillment. Passionate and dedicated, Joanne engages with her clients on a mutual journey. Her dynamic energy will motivate you to move forward as you partner on a venture to greater results. Isn't it time to make a breakthrough and commit to live the life you deserve? Invest in yourself and let Joanne Charette be the catalyst to the realization of your dreams by making them a reality. Based in Quebec, Canada, Joanne is also a space coach using social media and Skype to work with anyone, anywhere around the world. Contact Joanne Charette today at 819-360-3266 or email her at actionrealization at live.ca 819-360-3266 Now is your time. Hey, everyone, it's Frances Reeves, the host of Parent Your Parents. I'm coming to you live from BBN Global and Tune In Radio. And we were talking about nothing pleasant. We were talking about serial killers of seniors. And I just mentioned several and then reminded you at the end that, again, I only mentioned four, and there are a lot more seniors. But nevertheless, if you're the loved one of one of these people who was killed, you're not happy that these people are allowed to exist. And if you're not happy that they're not allowed to exist, wait till I tell you what regular medicine (laughs) does to our seniors. I mean, my, my favorite example always is, Often we think our loved ones are losing it, and it turns out it's just over medication. I know personally that with my father, I looked at all his medication, and in my early years as an attorney, I had done medical malpractice defense. In other words, I defended doctors, and in so doing, realized that drugs are a big contributor and the pharmaceutical industries love that. So if you think mom, dad, or Uncle George are acting strangely or forgetting, you know, go go figure out how much medicine they're taking first before you and then talk to the doctor about it. The truth is, nearly 20% of seniors are injured by medical care. This is a study I just read. And there were 12,500 Medicare patients with an average age of 76, and in my world, that's young, 
and nearly one in five suffer from medical injuries when receiving uh, medical care. Things like given the wrong medication, they have an allergic reaction to the medication, they receive treatment that led to more complications of the existing medical problem, or the interaction with some herb or vitamin supplement they were taking caused a medical event. Now, those who experienced a medical injury, and remember, a medical injury is nothing more than regular medicine performed badly, had a death rate nearly double of those who had not. They also use medical services a whole lot more, which, of course, increases health care costs in, in the year following the injury. So everybody but the senior benefits. While, while the media often focuses on medical injuries in hospitals, this study actually found that two-thirds, two-thirds of injuries occurred during outpatient care. Previous studies had found that about 13.5% of hospital patients suffer from adverse medical events. But in this particular study, 19% of seniors are harmed by medical care. As I said earlier, that is one in five. And that's just medical care. Older people, men, people with lower incomes, and people with disabilities are at an even greater risk. In fact, the more chronic conditions a person has leads to an almost 30% rise in premature death per condition. That means if you have diabetes and COPD, your chance for premature death increases to a little over 50%. And that is only because of the medical care. It's not because either one of these conditions would would cause that. It's because the medical care given is not administered correctly. The the lead researcher noted, and I quote, these injuries are caused by medical care or management rather than any underlying disease. The rate of these injuries is probably higher than has been estimated. In other words, we don't always know what has caused these reversible errors. Don't you love how the medical industry calls a death a re- an ir- a preventable error? Really? Really? So, you know, conventional medicine is focused on diagnostic tests, drugs, surgical intervention, and the bottom line is that it clearly kills far more people then it saves or helps. And I don't know about you guys, but it just seems until my father turned 90, um, doctors were always saying, well, we could go in and operate. And in my mother and father's generation, as I say, that's the greatest generation, and mom and dad's generation, if a doctor said you should operate, you should operate. You know, they operated, but an operation has so many possible consequences, and one of them happened to my mother. She was 77 years old, and they decided at 77 that she needed a knee replacement, a knee replacement. So I remember flying to Houston, where mom and dad lived at the time, And she had the replacement, but post-surgery, 
she she was trying to escape constantly. Uh, she was very uncomfortable. Finally, I went and looked at the chart. She was taking a Xanax, which is an anti-anxiety medication. She was taking a Halidol, which is a very strong sleep medication. I mean, along with her regular basic medication and the antibiotics that go with the operation. So, so the truth here is, no wonder mother was uncomfortable trying to escape. We had people, well, I slept with her for the first two or three nights. And then uh, we had a babysitter come in to sleep with her. And at the end of it, when we took her home, it even got worse. And we're going to go back into that when we come back after the break. And I'll talk to you guys soon. There are artists and then there's Alice Asmar. This award-winning artist has spent her entire life devoted to her artistic pursuits and has had a lifelong fascination with American Indians of the southwestern United States. Her book, Dance to the Great Spirit, showcases her drawings and paintings inspired by sacred rituals of the Pueblo Indians and four of her lithographs are in permanent collection at the National Museum of American History and the Smithsonian Institution in Washington, D.C. She is one of four artists in the United States to win a Woolley Fellowship for study in Paris at Les Colde Beaux Arts and has been featured in numerous publications. She's exhibited at the world's most prestigious museums and galleries and recently won a 20 year service award from the Burbank City Council and the inaugural art competition of the Foundation of the United States in Paris. Visit www.asmarart.com, www.aliceasmarinternational.com, and email alice at aliceasmar at aol.com. Introducing BetterHomeAndGarden.com. That's www.BetterHomeAndGarden.com with just the letter N in Better Home and Garden. BetterHomeAndGarden.com offers you the highest quality products on the market that are environmentally safe and effective and to make them available to you at the lowest possible prices. BetterHomeAndGarden.com understands that kind of creativity and do-it-yourself attitude. Thus, we developed our website, BetterHomeAndGarden.com. BetterHomeAndGarden.com offers you the following products right online. Bath, bedding, collectibles, craft, sewing and hobby, food and beverage, furniture, home decor, kitchen and dining, lamps and lighting, large appliances, musical instruments, outdoor cooking, patio items, pet supplies, plant and garden, rug and floor coverings, small appliances, travel and luggage, and so much more. Better Home and Garden is an online retailer offering a wide variety of high-quality brand name merchandise at discount prices. Our service is personal and we aim to please. Visit us at www.betterhomeandgarden.com. Make your home your own. Hey, everyone, it's Frances Reeves from Parent Your Parents. I'm hosting you today live from Portland, Oregon. And we're on BBM Global and TuneIn Radio. And um, just a little plug for my company, ParentYourParents.com. All these situations that you hear me talk about, I have dealt with through my clients. We do everything on the non-medical side of growing old, which most of us on the staff are also doing. Every time you look at your parents and think, oh, I'll never be like that, go look in the mirror again, because guess what? It will happen to you. And talking about parents, that's exactly what I was doing on before we broke for commercials. And I was telling you about my mother and her knee replacement surgery and the fact that the caretakers in the hospital had given her way too much medication and medication that didn't go well together, such as Xanax and Halidol. And I'm just a lawyer, not a medical doctor, and I knew that, and raised holy hell. But here is the worst part. Mother, at the age of 77, she comes home from the hospital And the knee is infected. That means that for six months, my mother carried with her antibiotics that were um, placed into her body through an IV portal to clean up 
the MRSA infection she had received in the hospital. Now, this happens. I've, I've heard this. My mother is not the only one. I don't know whether it's 5 or 10% of the cases. I haven't looked that up recently where you have to do it again. I have another friend who is in his early 70s, and he just went through his second hip replacement because he, uh, the first one was infected. But we'll get to him in a second. But back to mom. Now, it is time for her to go and have another knee placed in her body. So this 76 to 77, all this happened in those years, year old woman has now been sick for over a year from what is a preventable disease. This didn't have to happen to mom. So they call me to tell me when her next surgery is because my brother and I are going to, one's going to fly out for the front, on the front end, one's going to fly out on the back end. And do you know what? They're doing it in the same hospital. I raised, I hope I can say this on the radio, holy hell. I could not believe that a doctor would agree to do it in the same hospital Although his physician's assistant said to me, well, you know, we have them tented and in a very sterile um, environment. In other words, they put a tent inside the operating room and then put pure oxygen or whatever in there so there's nothing but uncontaminated air. Or so they tell you. Well, you know what? In my opinion, if the first hospital gave her MRSA, we need to give another hospital the business. So we moved the surgery back a week or 10 days, and she went into another hospital. But what I'm trying to say here is you have to be on top of that. You you have to be. Surgeries like this are difficult. The older we get, the harder They are, which is, I know why I try to stay out of a hospital. And then my friend, who is just now, just got his hip replaced again. This is a man who has had a a heart replacement. So he has somebody else's heart beating in his chest. And that heart replacement happened about five years ago, or maybe six. But he broke his hip bike riding. His heart's working fine. and But he, he was bike riding, uh, fell down three or four stairs, came off the bike, broke his, broke his hip. I mean, he hurt himself, and that was the worst break. He goes in to get a hip replacement and comes back out. It didn't get better. It didn't get better couple of diagnoses, and I'm listening to them tell me this. And I said, I said to his wife, I said, well, wasn't he, wasn't he operated on in a tent, you know, like my mother for her second one? Because if you have a heart, a donor heart, you're taking all of these rejection medications and By virtue of a heart transplant, your immune system is already lower than most. And guess what? Those orthopedic docs hadn't really thought about his heart. They just placed him in a regular operating room and done a regular hip transplant. So he has suffered for a year and a half. He just came out of this hip transplant, and we'll see how he does. But again, I'm telling you. You have to be logical about this. You have to look at the whole person, your senior. What is it you can do do for them? I mean, the, the truth is that um, conventional medicine, which as we said earlier, is focused on diagnostic tests, drugs, surgical intervention, clearly kills far more people than it saves or helps. And 
this is often due to side effects, whether they're expected or not. But these preventable errors also account for an absolutely staggering number of deaths. Now, in my mom's case and in my friend's case, they're alive and well, but the bottom line is they have been suffering um, for, in my friend's case, a year and a half. We'll discuss this a little bit more when we come back after the break. So I'll talk to you then. Animal lover, author, artist, and public speaker, Patricia Daly Life is a renaissance woman in her own right. A lover of animals from a young age, Patricia lives on a farm in Virginia and has rescued neglected thoroughbred horses, keeping them or finding them safe havens. She is also a published author, and her books document real-life experiences that she shares in her passionate stories, taking the reader around the world in a colorful kaleidoscope of life. An accomplished artist, Patricia Daly Life's oil paintings feature animals, portraits, stills, nature, and abstract, and she allows the brush to paint the image in an organic, natural way. A public speaker, Patricia is motivated to continually wonder about life and advocates for all of us to do the same and document our own unique history. To learn more about Patricia Daly Life, visit www.literarylady.com and www.patricialife.com or email her at pdlife at gmail.com. Hello, I'm Steve Fagan, and I'm president and CEO of Fagan Associates, but I'm also a life coach. I'm here to help you reach your dreams, goals, and objectives. As a life coach, it's my job to be your support, to be your teammate, to help you understand what is your dream, what is your life passion, and then together we work as that team to help you reach your specific goals. Life is worth living the best you can be. Working with a life coach, you're fulfilling those dreams and goals is your passion, and it's your way of living. Let me help you do that today. Let me help you really reach the best that you can be as a person and live the life you should be living. I'm Steve Fagan. I'm a life coach, and I'm here for you. Contact Steve Fagan at FaganAssociatesInc.com or call 1-800-239-2701. And I'll be glad to help you move forward to live the life of success. Reach your dreams, your goals, your objectives. We can do it together. Hey, everyone, it's Frances Reeves. I'm president of Parent Your Parents and host of the show of the same name, Parent Your Parents. We're coming to you live from BBM Global and TuneIn Radio, and we're talking about the darker side of medical care for seniors. This is something I've written several articles on, and constantly doing research because my clients come to me uh, with different issues. And right before we, we went on break, we were talking about how conventional medicine um, kills far more people than it saves or helps because of the side effects of extra medicine that probably isn't necessary or doesn't interact well with other things you're taking. Um, and these small preventable errors like the surgeries, the knee surgery and hip surgeries I was talking about, which then become infected. And in this case, both people lived, but it's taken a year and a half of antibiotics and discomfort and medical costs, constant medical costs to keep them alive and get them a new knee and a new hope. So, I when I left you, I was just getting ready to tell you that according to 2013, so that's five years ago, but I don't have anything newer than that. According to 2013 research into the cost of medical mistakes in terms of lives lost, 210,000 Americans are killed by preventable hospital errors each year. Now, that's not just seniors. It's everyone. But I assure you, seniors are the majority of that because seniors have a lower immune system by virtue of their age. That's why flu shots 
are such a big part of their lives. But, but what I'm trying to say here is that when deaths are related to diagnostic errors or errors of omission or, and doctors are horrible about this, not following the guidelines, the number of deaths skyrockets to an estimated 440,000 preventable deaths each year. And here's the, here's the kicker. Two-thirds of medical errors occur outside of the hospital. That means the actual death toll from conven- conventional medicine may be far higher than we're, we're really reporting. Serious non-lethal harm is likely... to become lethal harm 10 to 20 times more often outside of the hospital. So the um, man who made, who authored this study stated, In a sense, it does not matter whether the deaths of 100,000, 200,000, or 400,000 Americans are associated with preventable adverse events in hospitals. Any of these estimates demand assertive action on the part of providers, legislators, and people who will one day become patients. Now, that's me. And that's a lot of you out there. Now, here's another issue with seniors. They are playing a little bit of Russian roulette with polypharmacy. Polypharmacy simply means many drugs. And it refers to individuals who take too many drugs, either because they're prescribed or clinically indicated or um, what happens is the sheer number of pills you have to take becomes a burden for the patient. If you're an average 65-year-old or older living adult living in the U.S., you fill more than 31 prescriptions per year. And that's not including the -the over-the-counter drugs, which will push those numbers much, much higher. So all these pharmaceuticals and over-the-counter drugs put seniors at an incredible risk from unintended pardon me, unintentional drug overdose. And those have increased fivefold since 1990. The more drugs you take, the higher the risk of adverse reaction. So the bottom line is, if you're on a prescription drug and answer yes to any of the question below, you may be at an increased risk of polypharmacy. Even if you have your medications prescribed to you. So, ask yourself, do you take herbs, vitamins, or over-the-counter products? Do you have to take medicine more than once a day? Do you suffer from arthritis? Do you use different pharmacies to fill your prescriptions? Do you have poor eyesight or hearing? Do you live alone? Do you sometimes forget to take your medication? If you answered yes to two or more of these, I want you to take a really good look at the medicines you're taking. And if it's your loved one for whom you answered yes, I want you to take a good look at what it is they're taking. I constantly inventoried what my parents were taking that was prescribed. 
the and here's here's what's so ironic about taking all these medications that because you take so many uh, prescriptions, it leads to more prescriptions because sometimes those drugs make you look like you're taking that that you have another disease. Can you believe that? We'll talk about that a little bit more on the other side. Talk to you then. Patricia Fayweather Harlow is passionate about the environment and conserving our natural resources. She's written a five-part book series for all ages called Rock with Rodney and Party with Perky to Preserve Wildlife, which brings awareness through these vibrant characters on preserving and protecting our national parks and historic landmarks. Harlow has launched a campaign to mobilize green supporters, informing a united front against big oil, big coal, and the Keystone XL pipeline. And she addresses the controversial practice of fracking in books four and five. She's determined to bring greater awareness to the dangers of drilling and running crude oil through pipelines that cut through pristine landscapes. And she empowers readers to take action in keeping America beautiful. To learn more about Patricia Fayweather Harlow and to purchase her books, visit www.patricia-fayweather-harlow.com. That's F-A-Y-E-R-W-E-A-T-H-E-R. And play your part in preserving the landscape that we all share and love. Hi, my name is Myra Fox, and I am a survivor. I am the founder of the Castle Lewis I Survived Foundation and the author of a series of books entitled I Survived a Murder Untold, which tells a story of my sister and I who were abandoned and left in the care of a woman who beat us repeatedly. Unfortunately, it resulted in the death of my sister, Castle Lewis, which is revealed in a page-to-page chilling story. After spending time in the foster care system, I've documented my suffering and my loss and ultimately my survival. I'm blessed to work daily in my community and surrounding areas to give back by helping others and feeding the homeless. I want to spread awareness of the dangers of abuse. You can purchase my books and contribute to the Castle Lewis I Survive Foundation by visiting www.castlelewis.com or you can call us at 540-999-8401. Thank you. Hey, it's Frances Reeves. I'm the host of Parent Your Parents. And I can't believe it, but but we're almost done. We've been talking about senior exploitation. And um, even though really wealthy kids do it to their really wealthy parents, and that some nurses and hospital workers will be, are, and have been serial killers of seniors. The truth is some of the biggest exploiters are, is just the medical industry itself, simply because we, because there are so so many preventable errors. And in seniors, We tend to, this has been my anecdotal observation, we tend to not worry about them quite so much. But if a senior has two chronic diseases like COPD and diabetes, well, the risk of an avoidable death or an earlier death goes up by 50% because of mismanagement of their medical care. And so we, as the loved ones, have to truly take an interest in this. And I had just talked to you all about how often we, you see seniors taking so much medication, uh, like five or six pills, and that the irony in all this is that the more pills that are prescribed, the more pills that are prescribed, because what happens is you, these medicines, these pharmaceuticals get together in your body, and an indication for another illness comes up. And boom, the doctor says, well, I think you have this, and here is a medicine. In other words, 
it's all about giving you uh, that little pill instead of really digging deep to find out what's going on. Now, we at Parent Your Parents actually have a physician on staff because if when I observe someone, I'm a little nervous about their health care, our physician will simply take a look at all the at, at the history, including all the pharmaceuticals. Um, I mean, you know, hospitals certainly um, can give you infections. They can operate on the wrong arm or the wrong eye. But watching your medical care is just as important. The other really important issue is that while some adverse medical events and, you know, medical event can be anything, passing out, getting cold, some of these med- adverse medical events are realized immediately. Others may not be felt for months or even years. So you have to stop it now. And... Um, I am going to see you next week, Thursday, the 11th, and we'll talk a little bit more about some of the bad players in this arena and what to watch out for. In the meantime, though, I want to thank you for spending this hour with me. It's always good to remind myself and you all of how vigilant we have to be for our seniors. So thanks. And we'll talk next week. Bye now. You've been listening to Parent Your Parents with host H. Francis Reeves. Tune in each week and learn the basic steps on how to make the last chapter of your and your loved one's life fulfilling and worry-free. Right here on Parent Your Parents with H. Francis Reeves. You've been listening to the BBM Global Network. The ideas, views, and opinions of this broadcast are those of the participants of the program and are not necessarily the ideas, views, and opinions of the BBM Global Network Company.